Welcome back to my garage. Last time we had a first run in a while without anything breaking. And now it's time to start making some power. First up is setting ignition timing. I've disturbed the trigger locations. We need to find out where it's at and set it at the correct point again. I've set timing to 10 degrees flatline in the Ignitec unit. I'm gonna check with a timing light, record the deviation and adjust accordingly. And then set timing to like 20 degrees. See what happens. What was supposed to be 10 degrees is more like 3, 4. I'll set base advance to 4 degrees and then we'll advance it from there in the software. And on that note, we kick off this week's episode on this Break Stuff Repeat channel. I'm really glad I didn't perform any more test runs Friday. I could celebrate the whole weekend. And now it's back in the trenches. You're not seeing what I'm seeing here, but the valve is stuck. The same goes for the other side. And the shaft appears to be bent. Probably sheared off in there. Let's have a look. Hmm, that explains it. On the plus side, the new belts are really strong. Those twin disc valves are causing a lot of grief. There's been mentions of drum valves in the comments. And actually in the really early stages of this uh, prototype concept engine, I did play around with some drum valves. I think if I rotate the cylinder 90, I can incorporate twin drum valves and drive them from a single belt. I'll be back after a few hours in Fusion, show you what I can come up with. Combined drum valves and exhaust pipes. When there's high pressure acting on the disc valve, it becomes a disc brake. Any high pressure acting on this will only load the bearings. 
The reason I've gone for a combined drum valve and exhaust pipe is that if I would have made a drum valve and have the outlet on the other side of the valve, I would need two cutouts. When this side is open, this side is closed and vice versa. This won't be the best for flow, but I could machine something with a divider in the middle. Like imagine two of those. That would make it better. This will work for testing purposes. If this engine wasn't obscure enough before, picking up the bearings tomorrow, the pulleys and belt will be a few days. As much as it hurts me to say this, I'll have to end the video here. Thanks for watching. I've been giving it some thought and I just can't end the video where I said I was gonna end the video. I know that video would have been fine. I also know I would have released it early for the wrong reasons. By posting videos once every other week versus once a week, I'm basically cutting my ad revenue in half. For the first time in my life, I'm pretty much my own boss. Can't let YouTube destroy that. Does not mean I'm going to start posting every other week now. We'll do the usual once a week thing. But I'm not gonna let YouTube force me to do that if it doesn't suit the content I'm producing at the moment. Yeah. Since Friday, I've realized I'm an idiot. These cutouts are too large. If I have them fully closed at bottom dead center, they will open again before the piston closes off the ports, which won't work. I'll have to make new ones with a smaller cutout. Probably would have had to do that regardless though, because I want to press fit the pulleys, which haven't arrived yet, onto these shafts. And uh, I don't think pressing with that big cutout would have been a good idea. Maybe if I made a jig press in here. Anyways, I need to make new ones. And this time I got hold of some uh, stainless hydraulic pipe. This is hydraulic pipe, but it's not stainless. This is nicer, has a nicer finish and a better fit on the bearings. A really nice, snug fit. I'm hoping the pulleys will arrive today. I need to cut up this pipe, press on the pulleys and probably weld them. In the cutouts, mark out and cut grooves for, uh, for snap rings or Sega rings. I'm not quite sure what they're called. Those uh, spring clips which hold things in place. That's the order of operations. My exhaust flange mounting holes are only 10 millimeters deep to not break into the water jacket. I'm worried those threads are getting weak from a lot of assembly and disassembly. I want to drill out the holes, tap them and put in some threaded inserts. Make them stronger.
When it looks like mocked up on the engine, I think I went a little bit overboard on the bell length and I need to sand down these uh, exhaust tubes a little bit more. They're a tiny bit too tight. Unfortunately, that's all I have time for in this episode, for real this time. Next time we'll figure out the intake system and uh, maybe we'll get it started. See you next time.